Hello everybody and welcome to um, the online virtual uh, meeting for Foundation Stage Parents um, in which we will be going through how to support, how best to support your child through the Foundation Stage. Um, this will go a little bit deeper than the online meeting that we did around about um, in, in the summer um, which gave you information about preparation for school. This is going to go into a little bit more um, depth. Uh, really sorry that we can't have you in school at the moment to do this face to face. That's what we would prefer, obviously, because it would be lovely to meet you all properly. Um, but we're not able to do that yet, I'm afraid. Um, so at this meeting, these are the things that we are going to be going through. We're going to be looking at uh, supporting your child at home with their reading through phonics, uh, keywords um, and reading books that they will be sent home. We're also going to be looking at their early mark making and writing, the skills that they will be developing there and maths. And also we're going to be looking at independence and how best to support your child with developing their independence. So I'm going to hand over to the class teachers for the main input uh, and then I will be back at the end of the session. I hope you find it really useful. And now I'm going to be talking to you about maths. We teach maths in a really in-depth way in order to support your child with their deeper understanding of number. It's really important to secure a solid foundation of number so that children can build upon this in their later learning. And we use number blocks as a hook in our maths learning as they're really visual and really engaging for the children. The children are so motivated through number blocks and whole class discussion is stemmed from this. During our maths learning, we're constantly modelling and reinforcing mathematical language and vocabulary, which will help to support your child's fluency in number as they move up through the school. So what can you do at home to support your child in their maths learning? There are lots and lots of different things that you can do at home to help to support your child at home with their maths learning. Here are a list and a couple of ideas. You can do things such as counting the stairs when you're at home. You might go out for a walk and see if you can find different numbers. See if you can find a number on a sign or a number on a house. Uh, you can do some cooking and weigh out ingredients and you can do sorting, sorting out different foods into groups. Uh, so here are our expectations uh, for maths by Christmas. So by Christmas we expect the children to be able to count confidently to 10 and start to think about exploring beyond. Uh, to recognise numbers to 10, from 1 to 10, uh, to say one more and one less of numbers to 10, and uh, the correct number formation of numbers to 5. I'm going to talk a little bit about reading with you now. Um, so reading with your child is obviously really, really important. We've started to send home books without words in for a little while. This is to help you talk with your child about the story, tell the story, think about what's happening next. It's to build their communication and language skills as we start to develop their phonics skills ready for words really, really soon. Um, please read as much as possible as you can at home and record any reading you do in their reading records. We are changing books once a week at the moment, um, but that doesn't mean you don't have to read any other books at home. You can choose books that you've got in your own bookcase and record those as well. Please make sure that you do record any reading in the reading record so we can have a look at what you're doing at home. Um, we will read with your child at least once a week. We will try and read as much as possible as we can in school, but we are guaranteed to read once a week with your child and record it in their books. We are also doing lots of reading in our phonics and literacy sessions to help build on the skills that we've been learning in phonics. Keywords. So we will start sending home keywords soon as well, probably after half term. These words are words that they need to be taught and learnt by sight. So they're words that you won't sound out, they're words that some can be sounded out but they're so common that we try not to sound them out like mum, dad and some words are tricky words um, and they cannot be sounded out so you need to be able to just know them. We will send them home in their book bags, probably about three to five words a week, depending on how your child is getting on. Please can you help put these words into a sentence so that your child understands the context of this word. And we are learning to write them and read them in our phonics sessions as well to support their learning. But it's really important that you do practice these keywords as much as possible at home. Um, we will check your child's keywords on a weekly basis and we'll add any more new ones as and when they're needed. So phonics is taught daily, 
Um, we use a range of strategies to help your child learn the phonic sounds. Um, we use songs, actions and rhymes. So each sound is kind of called a phoneme and it has an action. We use a jolly phonics actions which you can find on YouTube um, to help your child remember the sound. Um, we learn to read and write through our phonics skills so it's really, really important that you help your child practice the sounds we've been learning at school as much as possible to help reinforce their learning. Um, again, this is where the high frequency words, the key words that we've spoken about earlier, that's where these come in and we will keep learning those in our phonics sessions but they need to be practiced at home as much as possible as well. So we have started to send home your phonics folders. This will have each sound that we've learned at school inside the folder with a range of activities to practice with your child. This is a way for you to know which sounds we've already covered um, and it gives your child a little bit of extra practice for their sounds to help reinforce their learning. Um, we've started to learn our sounds already, so we've already learned this at it sound um, and you can make lots of words even with those few sounds. It's really really important that you try and use the correct version of each sound so when you're saying each sound make it the purest sound you can so it's s t p it's not s t p you need to try really really try make it really clear so your child knows what you're saying and they can read and write easier if you say it as clearly as possible. So when you're practicing your phonics we do lots of segmenting and blending and we use our robot arms to help us do this and this is where the pure sound is really really important so if you are sounding out a word for example sat we get our robot arms ready and we say sat sat and it helps each child hear each individual sound that they can hear and write it down or read it to blend it as well for sheep we've got two letters here making some sounds so we've got sh e sheep but it's still only three sounds so using their robot arms really really helps children to break down each sound as clearly and as purely as they possibly can so by christmas we want all children to be able to recognize read and use phase phase two phonemes which are sounds and we hopefully will be starting phase three just before christmas we want to be able to segment and blend simple cvc words so those are words with three sounds in like sat hat you can also have sheep as well because it is only three sounds and know which letters to represent some of them so they can begin writing them and reading them. Um, we also want to encourage you to share a wide variety of books at home and at school including fiction, non-fiction poems, all sorts of books for children to enjoy um, and have a love of reading. Okay so I'm going to have a chat with you about writing and how to support your child of writing at home. As you know, your child, as they've grown up from a toddler, they've probably been enjoying lots of mark making at home. Maybe chalking on the pavement, grabbing the, the paintbrush and doing water painting and letting the sun dry it, um, playing with Play-Doh, sand, gloop, making lots of shapes, using their fingers to make their initial mark making. We then encourage your children to use symbols to represent letters, so they have a go at writing O's or lines and dashes, and that's wonderful on paper. Then they might have a go then at using real letters. They might copy signposts around or maybe the cereal box at um, breakfast time and having a go at writing those real letters. In apple and cherry class, we do not do a precursive font or we don't um, join up letters. We just do a plain um, font like we have here so they can read it and that's how we teach them. Writing signs and labels in the environment would be the next step. So a really good idea is to take a clipboard, go to the supermarket or the notebook and they can write lists of things they want to buy in the supermarket and when they see words around they can be copying them. So there's lots of lovely ideas there to help your child supporting them to um, write in um, the early years at home. By Christmas our expectations are that your child will be able to write their own name and labels and captions. Starting to use clearly identifiable letters to communicate simple meaning. We want your child to be able to hear and write initial sounds of words and that they could segment and blend simple words like Amy was talking about earlier. We want to encourage your child to be able to hold a pencil correctly 
beautiful and recognisable letters by Christmas. There's a little picture here of the good pencil grip. So we encourage your child to be using their, their pincer grip to be holding that pencil nice and firm and having a go. If your child's writing is too faint, just encourage them to press a little bit harder so then they'll make a clearer letter. I hope you found that useful and informative so far. I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about independence. Independence uh, when children come to school is really, really important. It's a skill that they need to develop from reception, from the outset. Um, so these are some of the things that we would expect children in the foundation stage to be doing from now, please. So we will encourage them to do it at, at school. And if you could encourage them to do these things at home as well, that would be really helpful. Don't worry if they don't get it straight away. Don't worry if it's something that they can't quite manage yet. Just let your class teacher know and keep working on it because all children are at different stages with this. So we would like children to be able to dress themselves. So if when you're at home, you can encourage your child to dress themselves, that would be really, really helpful. Um, going to the toilet, wiping own bottoms um, is, is something that's important, especially at the moment in the current climate that children are able to do themselves. Um, it takes time for some children, but if you can keep working on that with them at home, that would be really, really great. Washing their hands. They're doing a lot in school at the moment. They really need to be able to wash their hands themselves. If you can encourage children uh, to wash, wash their hands carefully uh, on the front, on the back, in between their fingers, like that, and then this part as well, um, that's what we're encouraging them to do at school so if you're able to to support with that at home as well that would be really really good um putting on their own coat and taking it off can actually be a real challenge for some children we've had coats on upside down on the wrong way uh, all sorts but they're but they're trying to do it themselves which is the important thing so if when they're when you're going out and about especially at this time of year when it's starting to get chilly outside if you can encourage them to put their own coat on have a go at doing the zipper um and their shoes as well. We would encourage shoes at the moment that don't have laces um, because not many children uh, aged four and five can do their own laces, uh, but Velcro and other fastenings uh, are much easier. And if you can encourage them to do that themselves, that would be really great. Um, dropping children at the gate, we've been absolutely amazed at how well the children have come in this year, how well they've separated from you as their parents. Uh, and that is testament to you so thank you very much it's working very well dropping off at the gate and bringing the children through we know there are some children that are still struggling to separate from parents in the morning please don't worry if that's your child because that will that will come it's just taking a while to adjust um, but thank you very much normally at this time we're starting to say can you leave the children at the gate rather than coming into the classroom but obviously we've had to do that from the word go this this year for obvious reasons. So uh, well done for that, everybody. It's, it's worked really well. Um, just uh, a reminder about the COVID-19 precautions that we've got in place at the moment. Uh, I know that you're all aware, you're all doing a really great job with sticking, sticking to that. Please can we remind you, um, unless there's a reason not to, to wear a mask when you're dropping your child at school and for your child to wear a mask too when they're coming into the building and leaving. Um, and like I've already mentioned, washing hands, loads and, and all of those other um, hygiene measures. If you can encourage those as much as, as possible, and remind your child about them, that would be really helpful. And again, we're sorry that we're not able to have you in school at the moment. Um, there will be parents' evenings in November, which we've already been notified about. Those will be held on the phone, um, unfortunately, but it will give you a chance to have a 10-minute conversation with your child's class teacher to be able to talk about how they've settled in uh, and any particular um, strengths that have already come through and also anything that they've uh, identified that you can work on with your child at home. So uh, I hope you've all got um, a slot or an hour slot in which your teacher will will phone you. Um, that will be done bef before the end of term, so they will. those meetings will happen straight after half term. Hopefully you're all signed up to Dojo. Uh, you can communicate as readily as you would like to with teachers uh, there. If you can see the slide, apologies for the typo, there's an H missing on teachers. Sorry about that. Um, please note that teachers will respond to dojo messages between 8 and 4 uh, and not in the evenings. Um, also, uh, we would like to um, 
to remind you that Dojo is for positive um, communication and also for sharing things that have happened in school, sharing things that have happened at home, letting us know if there's if your child's had a, a wobbly morning or, or and they're worried about anything. Um, if you've got a concern or something that you'd like to talk about with your with your teacher, then please ask for a phone call on Dojo rather than writing um, long messages. Your teacher will class teacher will do the same if they have any concerns, but Dojo really isn't for um, going into detail about concerns uh, that you that you have. Uh, please make sure all the clothing is labelled, even down to their children's socks. We are training children to keep their clothes in one place when they're changing for PE, particularly at the moment because we don't want clothes being mixed up. Um, but things do go walk about, jumpers get left off um, and, and muddled up. So it's really, really important this year, particularly that all clothing is labelled, please. Um, even if you've just written with a Sharpie in the, la in the label, that's fine, but we just need to know who each item of clothing belongs to. Um, and please remember to send your child to school with a coat, especially at this time of year. They need a coat that needs to be labelled as well. And it's useful to have wellies in school for when the weather gets wet. And children, we've had coats on upside down on the wrong way, uh, all sorts, but they're, but they're trying to do it themselves, which is the important thing. So if when they're, when you're going out and about, especially at this time of year when it's starting to get chilly outside, if you can encourage them to put their own coat on, have a go at doing the zipper, um, and their shoes as well. We would encourage shoes at the moment that don't have laces um, because not many children uh, aged four and five can do their own laces, uh, but Velcro and other fastenings uh, are much easier. And if you can encourage them to do that themselves, that would be really great. Um, dropping children at the gate, we've been absolutely amazed at how well the children have come in this year, how well they've separated from you as their parents. Uh, and that is testament to you. So thank you very much. It's working very well, dropping off at the gate and bringing the children through. We know there are some children that are still struggling to separate from parents in the morning. Please don't worry if that's your child because that will that will come. It's just taking a while to adjust. Um, but thank you very much. Normally at this time, we're starting to say, can you leave the children at the gate rather than coming into the classroom? But obviously we've had to do that from the word go this this year for obvious reasons. So uh, well done for that, everybody. It's, it's worked really well. Um, just uh, a reminder about the COVID-19 precautions that we've got in place at the moment. Uh, I know that you're all aware, you're all doing a really great job with sticking, sticking to that. Please can we remind you, um, unless there's a reason not to, to wear a mask when you're dropping your child at school and for your child to wear a mask too when they're coming into the building and leaving. Um, and like I've already mentioned, washing hands, loads and, and all of those other um, hygiene measures. If you can encourage those as much as, as possible and remind your child about them, that would be really helpful. And again, we're sorry that we're not able to have you in school at the moment. Um, there will be parents' evenings in November, which you've already been notified about. Those will be held on the phone, um, unfortunately, but it will give you a chance to have a 10-minute conversation with your child's class teacher to be able to talk about how they've settled in uh, and any particular um, strengths that have already come through and also anything that they've uh, identified that you can work on with your child at home. So uh, I hope you've all got um, a slot or an hour slot in which your teacher will will phone you. Um, that will be done bef before the end of term, so they will. those meetings will happen straight after half term. Hopefully you're all signed up to Dojo. Uh, you can communicate as readily as you would like to with teachers uh, there. If you can see the slide, apologies for the typo. There's an H missing on teachers. Sorry about that. Um, please note that teachers will respond to Dojo messages between eight and four. Uh, and not in the evenings. Um, also, uh, we would like to um, to remind you that Dojo is for positive um, communication and also for sharing things that have happened in school, sharing things that have happened at home, letting us know if there's if your child's had a, a wobbly morning or and they're worried about anything. Um, if you've got a concern or something that you'd like to talk about with your with your teacher, then please ask for a phone call on Dojo rather than writing um, long messages. Your teacher will class teacher will do the same if they have any concerns, but Dojo really isn't for um, 
going into detail about concerns uh, that you that you have. Uh, please make sure all the clothing is labelled, even down to their children's socks. We are training children to keep their clothes in one place when they're changing for PE, particularly at the moment because we don't want clothes being mixed up. Um, but things do go walk about, jumpers get left off. Um, and and muddled up so it's really really important this year particularly that all clothing is labeled please um, even if you've just written with a sharpie in the la in the label that's fine but we just need to know who each item of clothing belongs to um, and please remember to send your child to school with a coat especially at this time of year they need a coat that needs to be labeled as well and it's useful to have wellies in school for when the weather gets wet and when children start going to the woods and doing outdoor learning, they'll need to bring or wear to school a set of outdoor learning clothes that you're not worried about getting messed up. But we will let you about, know about that more nearer the time. So thank you very much for listening. Um, again, sorry that we weren't able to welcome you into school personally, um, but hopefully it won't be too long before we're able to do that. Um, I hope you're child is settling in really well to reception. We've been very, very impressed with how well they've settled this year, particularly seeing as they've not been in any setting um, since, since the spring. They've done an absolutely fabulous job and we're very proud of them. I hope you are too. Um, if you have any questions regarding any of this information, please send a dojo to your class teacher and they will endeavour to answer your questions and help you out. Bye bye for now.